Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding Mr. Maker. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad will all go on. Hey, man, we got a guy here, y'all. He really don't need no introduction. Yeah, this guy right here, man. Hey, man, for me, coming up as a young'un, and hearing this guy right here, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I thought I could do whatever. Nigga gave me strength to feel like, hey, man, look, man, I'm ready for the night, the day, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mike is in the building. Hey, hey. Man, what's going on? Man, just living, man. Staying you, on top of things. Listen, man. Listen, man. You know, we talked last time, and it didn't come out, man. I was so hurt behind it. But, hey, man, listen, man. God done worked it out in a way where we right back on the set, man. Bigger and better things. God's timing is greater than mine, and I'm going to just continue grinding and shining. Man. So, man, you know, you one of those guys, man, that, I, I'm a, a matter of fact, I'm going to let Miss Jamaica start it off because I know already how she's going to do it, and it's going to bring Ms. everything where Jamaica. I need it to be. Yes, because, you know, a lot of these young cats don't know who Mr. Mike is, okay? Yeah. So we would love for you to, you know, let us know where you're from, how you were raised, I mean, your upbringing, how you even got into this music industry, like... Well, I started out from in a small country town. Okay. I'm one of them dudes that made it from the country to the city. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so I was used to, you know, dirt roads and everybody in the little town or city knew each other, you know. Mm -hmm. I just happened to just be just, I mean, depending on how far back you want to go. All so the way back. Exactly. You feel me? Like, Far back. If y'all to My mama was pregnant. They was trying to get her to a hospital here. Okay. She couldn't take it. They cut off the, this way and took her to a shorter hospital so she could have me, right? Okay. <laughs> so you, I ended up being born in a town I wasn't even from. Wow. Right? You were ready to get into this world. <laughs> no, she was in uh, labor for 18 hours. Ooh, you wasn't ready. She just wasn't there yet. All right. Okay. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters? I got uh, one sister and two brothers. You the oldest? Yes. Oh, so you led the way. Okay. When I was two years old, one and a half, close to two years old, mm -hmm. the story is my mama was cooking, mm -hmm. right? I'm this little curious dude. Like, I'm already the man of the house, like, at two. Mm -hmm. So I'm just learning how to walk. She cooking. She got something in the stove. This is the 70s. The stoves was different than they are now. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about them was real live gas fire stoves. Mm. With you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Story was she had to go to the store real quick or something because she something with the food, mm -hmm. little mm -hmm. ingredient or something. I gotta go grab. Right. Left, left me there, right? With my great Amy, who wasn't paying attention. No, who was who was already was amputated. Oh. Mm. She just wheelchair all the time or she's in the bed. Okay. Right? And the food on the stove cooking. And I'm this little dude. I come in the kitchen curious and stuck my hands on the stove. And got burnt. And my hands stayed stuck to the stove till somebody got there. So can you imagine this little kid screaming and this old Do lady? Do you have the scars still? Because yeah. them should be scars. Oh, I see it right there. Got you. Right? Imagine this lady back there that's amputated, hearing this little baby up here screaming. And the, this house is starting to smoke from something burning, and there's the baby in there with his hands stuck to the stove. How didn't you, like, just get all burnt? It's only your hand got burnt you up. You gotta ask God because this is, I was yeah, born because, maybe two. I don't even just, you know what I'm saying? Right, because when I think about a real gas stove, because I remember those, is it, okay, is it that stove? Because I had one growing up. It was a gas stove, but when you get the matches, you light it, and the fire pops up. It was, is it, it one it of those? It was a stove in the 70s. 
Okay, well, More because I'm like, it was. yeah, because I'm thinking if it was one of those, you should have been burnt totally up, like burn you up. Hallelujah, praise God, I'm still here today. Wow, man. So you, uh, what, what were you from? Carp was it Carpus Christi? I was born no. in a town called Taft, Texas. Okay, right. I lived in a small town called Aransas Pass, Texas. I went to um, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and then moved to a town called Bay City, Texas, and went to third grade, and then moved to a town called Van Vleck, Texas, and went from fourth grade to 11th grade, and this, my senior year, I left Van Vleck, Texas, and moved to Houston, and went to North Shore, in Channel View for my senior year, and I quit school my 12th grade year, the second semester. Mm, mm, mm. So, cool. but when you're dealing with all, when you're dealing with all of these small towns, no, y'all want to know it all, right? Yeah, 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 come yeah. On. Okay. But when you're dealing with all these small towns that you're talking about, how bad was racism in these small towns? Because one thing I know about Texas, that's where you mainly had all of that was in them small towns. You really don't pick up on racism until it's like affecting what you're trying to pr produce or pursue. Okay. Some some people don't pick up on racism like because they content with their life not being nothing. So did you experience it? Racism? Yes. I've experienced racism, yeah. Tell me about an instance where it was blatant in your face. I was driving me and my kinfolk. I'm the oldest one. I'm mm. the driver. I'm the driver and the damn shooter at this point. Mm. Because we on our way to Corpus. Mm -hmm. Some white boys pulled up beside us and was like, fuck the niggas, fuck the niggas. Mm. And I was like, what? Are y'all serious? And I'm scared turned around and just, I'm young then. And it didn't take nothing for me to just zoom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's, I zoom. And I turned and I followed them. This was in Ingleside, Texas. And they pulled, they turned on the little country road. I turned on the country road behind them. They stopped about maybe 50 feet ahead, start getting out their car. I stopped, told my cousin, hey, y'all stand behind this door because I'm strapped. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't. I don't know if there was or not, but the, one of the white dudes got out with his hand behind his back. Mm -hmm. The other dudes was getting out too, but I'm just paying attention to him really. Because his hand. Because mm -hmm. his hand behind his back. And so he was walking towards us like we had a distance though. And he was walking towards us. And for whatever God showed me that he, he did something with his hand and I seen that he ain't have nothing in his hand. So I started busting at him. And then hit him. I don't know. That's the way it be. Like we, you know, uh, yeah. Mm. That really, and it, and it ain't nothing but uh, a, a part of what happens when you get out of line with some real, you know. We young, so I get where he come from because I've been there. So you know, you don't wait to see when you when something like that go on either. Most of the time, you move around. And you move around quick because, you know, these white boys in the first place. But you, know you say you don't know, but then I would think when you start shooting at somebody, they gonna, you're going to either see them fall or you're going to see some. Not necessarily because I'm at a, I'm, we at a distance. At a distance. Right? So I'm shooting and it's multiple. And he didn't people. shoot back because it's, he didn't have a gun. It's multiple of them. Right. I'm you don't know what they got. I'm Did anybody focused. shoot back? You could I'm hear just, anything? No. Nah. No, so after all that, they was portraying like they had something. Did you jump in your car and drive off after that? Yeah, I told my cousin like, man, we, I, we, I didn't have time to study the situation. Oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just asking. I I'm just, trying to tell you. I man. let off, and I seen them get to one Ducky. of them could have got hit. I don't know. Man, it wasn't reported on the news. No homicide. <laughs> no none of that. Wasn't no. It was right. just. Happened in the broad day with us and some white dudes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's a part of what goes on sometime in the South, man. You know, a lot of times in those days, it was going down. Now they, they're not as blatant with it, but it still goes on, you know, uh, on, in a precipitated fashion. Um, so you get 
after you you know being in this small town and whatnot, what how did you introduce yourself to music? What how did right. you step up to well, the plate? My mama always had me in the choir as mm -hmm. a young kid. I was sung in the choir. I had grown ladies in the audience shouting with their wigs falling off and crying and just dancing and all this. And I'm a young nigga, a kid watching this. How did that affect you, seeing that music had that much power over somebody? At that particular time, I, I didn't like study how it's affecting. Mm. I'm just going through the motions. I'm a kid. I'm like a teenager. How old were you? Oh, teenager. Mm. But I started singing in the church like at five, four. Okay. The preacher would tell my mama, hey, make sure you bring that boy so he can sing when we go out. Oh, you're alto? Uh, probably tenor. Tenor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What was your favorite song to sing? God has smiled on me. Come on now. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. Mm. And see, niggas know me for rapping, so they yeah. people really don't know me. Yeah, but at the wow. end of the day, um, man, listen, man, it's something about you know making a joyful noise to the Lord. Yeah, well, be nice honest voice. with you, you know that that's that, that's why them, that's why they were falling out, jumping around, <laughs> catching a Holy Ghost. Oh, look, it goes deeper than that. One of my mama friends and caught me on this on this slick and got me outside of church doing things and I'm a kid. She married with three kids. Uh -uh. Yeah. I'm sneaking out my mama window. Yeah, it's going down. Cause she picking me up. This the lady from the church. Yeah, it's going down. That's what turned me from church kind of. I was just down. about to say that same Peace thing. Up, so really, she turned you out. She did. She picked me. She used to pick me up, take me down to the road, and it got. She got off the hook with it. She would. We would be at the house. Like she bring me to the other side of the house. She'll make everybody go over here and take me over. I'm like this mm -hmm, woman doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Man, you know, and that, but but you know, a lot of times that, that y'all wanted to hear it all. Didn't no, no, we got to hear it all. Uh, when you think about it, 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 this is every, and it ain't just happened to you. This just happened consecutively I to know. most people that's going to a lot of different buildings, doing different things. We've heard crazy stories about people who were even the leader of the church. You know, got babies, and they they can't even say that he they dead. It's just sitting out there being preached to. So this is something that, that was happening frequently in, in a lot of the uh, churches. And I was a kid, so really, what's that called? Well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. She's Petrified. a pedophile. So I'm a victim of it. It's out there. Wow. Now, yeah, you remind me of Antoine Fisher. Mm -hmm. Y'all you know, go check that movie out. So, you know, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, the music, though, as far as this hip hop, because you came up in a time where when you came on the scene in hip hop, you got to understand, uh, yeah, it was real. You know, South wasn't getting a lot of recognition. And I, I was listening at uh, the South, sir. I was listening at all the music, man. I'm Who a was music. was relevant during that time? Well, you had the Ghetto Boys. You had, uh, uh, you had a bunch. Of, you had Big Mike. You had Magic Mike. Mm -hmm. You had uh, uh, you had. Let me keep going. You know, you I had Nemesis. Who, you had Nemesis. Who outside of Texas? Because I was. I'm naming there. people outside of Texas. Okay, I'm Luke, trying to. You had Luke. It was a lot of. So it wasn't that long you, ago. Yeah. I'm trying to find somebody that Luke, I know. You don't know Luke. Uh, 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 hey, we want some. You know. Uh, was Heavy D? Uh, throw that or D. Heavy D was. Throw that D. Was throw Heavy that, D after? Throw that, throw that. Was Heavy D after you Party or before people. you? people. Yeah, come on, man. I'm giving it to you. When was Heavy D? When Heavy D was before or after? Heavy D was before. Oh, okay. But so he we, came but, after. Yeah, yeah. He was a, he was a little well, bit heavy before. D. That's Heavy D. East Coast was East Coast. Yeah. I know. I, that, that's but why she's trying I, to relate to I'm trying to relate to He's the Jamaican. Time. I'm she's trying, trying to, to plug the nigga in. She's Jamaican. She's trying to plug the nigga in. Oh, R.I.P. Okay. to Heavy okay. D. I love Heavy D. I used to bang Heavy D. Me too. Man, I love Heavy D, man. So, so uh, let me ask you this, man. So, so you get, you know, you got to understand you trying to come up on a career, but you ain't from Houston. But when I seen you, it, I thought you was from Houston when I first he seen you. Houston. No, he didn't. It wasn't that he repped it. It's just he was with a group that was in Houston that was out of Memphis. Look like what I'm, I'm after. I'm after the, the history. I'm 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 the the solidification of a Lone Star. We in the Lone Star State. That includes Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Corpus Christi, Austin, San Antonio, 
Whatever the hell you want it in, in Texas is considered to be the Lone Star State. Mm -hmm. I represent that to the fullest. Got it. I'm a Lone Star. Okay, so how did you end up, you know, I know last time you told the story, you said you almost ended up on rap a lot. Tell me that story. Well, at that time, just moving, trying to move my little demo tape and decided to shit. You take, went over there. Take a trip up to Rapala Studios. I'm trying to. Mr. Lee told me he remembered that. It was it was brief. You know, I'm talking about it wasn't like it was no. I believe it was Mr. Lee. Big told me meeting that. or nothing. It was just me, just a couple of people around. Young, knowing where niggas was hanging out at, seeing if I can get in somewhere and talk to somebody, let somebody hear my little. You know, what I'm talking about. It wasn't like I met with Jay Prince there and none of that. But Jay Prince has been at like my in stores where I was doing my record signings and he showed love. Came. So yeah, I always supported and loved everybody from Texas. They're all artists. I've always supported everybody out of Texas. But when you went to, to make that move, um, I think you told me that it, you might have said he, was, yeah, he wasn't there that day, but what, what caused you not to make that, you know, to be persistent about going back to there? Because I was waiting too long. I waited too long, and then this just I seen the little drama. I think Bushwick came up there, and, and his little kid was something had was blood bleeding from his nose. It was something going on with him, and mm. I'm just watching everything, and just the niggas is just I just wasn't I didn't I didn't fit in at that moment. Okay, you, you didn't fit in. Didn't at, get the right vibes at that particular. So me, I'm the type of guy like if I when I came here earlier. I'm a very, uh, what they call, uh, my spirit is very, very uh, discerning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My discernment is like. Real. And extremely, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not really, I'm not probably going to hang around long enough to see why. Okay. I'm just going to obey that. And that's so crazy yeah. that being a young kid, you, you knew, knew how to knew tune like into that. that. Because, you know, kids are usually, just like you said, you were a hothead and, you know, they don't listen to stuff like that. So that's really rare that you were able to discern, discern and listen, yeah. and move accordingly. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, the prodigal son. I don't know how old he was, but he said he thought to himself, "How many hired servants do my father got?" Mm -hmm. right. So you know, a lot of times, something your inner self may say something that speaks to you in a way to where you have to move on. It. I get it. Yes, <laughs> so you know, just um, you know, after seeing that whole run, you know. Um, uh, the way that that, that rap a lot was moving because really Scarface, you know, for the star attraction for me during that time. I'm not gonna say for everybody, but for me, he was the one that basically, when I looked at the Ghetto Boys or when I looked at rap a lot, uh, I was a Brad Jordan fan. You know what I mean? And he was bringing singles and he might bring one by himself, or it seemed like he was by himself a lot of times because he rapped two times on the verses and stuff. Um, so. Um, that was what I seen. Scarface is one of the most underrated artists of all time. He never actually got the do that he deserved. I'm not sure if he actually took the do that he deserved, but I know he don't. He don't get it. I feel like as far as he should have his hand somewhere somehow in some of the powers of the southern music game, mm -hmm. some kind of way. Cause he he paved too much, he kicked up too much dust mm -hmm. in his prime, and when when he was doing his thing, for to make a way for a lot of art, other artists from the south, man. So why do you feel that he didn't get his just due? Why do you feel that he's so underrated? Why don't you feel? Like, why do you feel like he didn't get to where he was supposed to be? Because he to do you now. You remember you asking me how I yes, feel? Yes, yes. Right. I'm asking how you feel. Right, because he never was able to come from under the umbrella he was under. What umbrella is that? Pretty much the rap a lot umbrella. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he tried when he went over to Def Jam. Hey, tried is just a word that gives you the opportunity to fail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but I not get it, and he did. You know what I'm saying? But the whole time, you see he left it alone. Yeah, he left it alone. He didn't stay long either. You know what I'm saying? He you didn't see, stay he long. He made an artist more successful than he actually Ludicrous. is. Ludicrous. Than actually than he is. Yeah, oh, Ludacris. He, he yes. discovered Ludacris? He was the one that yeah. introduced Ludacris. Okay. Yeah, he put Ludacris in the game when he went and became the president of Def, Def Jam, Jam South. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because do you, so right now, would you say, because I hear it all the time, but would you say, in your opinion, that 
at this moment, Scarface is the best rapper in Texas or I, in the South. It's different for me now because I, okay. don't, I don't, at this point in my career, I don't even consider him a rapper. I don't consider myself a rapper. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a street minister. And okay. what do you, how do you consider him? The same? I consider or? him as, as a street minister. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When he's in his element. Okay. You know wow. what I mean? I don't even like, today to be called a rapper is like totally different than when, it, when we did it back then. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was not just some. Um, the game has changed so much. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So when you look at that time, that was all kind of that was uh, last time I spoke to you a little bit about it. Uh, MJG and Eight Ball did a versus, and Eight Ball uh, he kind of seemed like he was calling out the fact that Gilly the Kid said that he was uh, he that he basically was running from Jay Prince because Jay, little Jay pulled up somewhere. They didn't say where, but he said you lying. If you, you, you run around here saying that, that I was running from uh, Jay Prince, I, that's a made up story. Um, during the time when you was with Suave House, what was the temperature like between Suave House and Rap a Lot in the South? Well, I can say this about the ball and Gilly. I wasn't there, but, and I don't know Gilly the kid like I know A Ball, but I can tell you this A Ball ain't doing a whole lot of running, especially at that time. He's a big guy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Shout out Ball, man. But he ain't so... I'm not sure what Gilly was saying. Um, where's the, the receipts for you to come and double back what Ball said? You know what I'm saying? So I don't just see Ball just... You know, Taking off running. Nah, I don't, Jumping I, in the I, car and pulling off real I mean, fast. And, and if he did, then more niggas than Gilly would be able to, to confirm that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we seen Big Ball trying to get the hell up out of there. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, 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 don't, I don't see it, but hey, you never know. I uh, wouldn't know. Well, you know, when I think about just the way that the internet is, when a person say something now, it, it, just, it, it just rings out, and the people get to hear it, and, and they be like, that could have happened. You know what I mean? Or this didn't happen. Because they don't, you know, they, like you said, the receipts are not there. So, so a lot of times, nigga be rah rah and it ain't nothing to back it. And a nigga, if he convincing enough on the mic, he can, or if he got enough followers or subscribers or whatever he got going, his voice is the loudest. Right. So he can just kind of attack the situation. Not saying Gilly was doing that, but I'm just telling you how it affects everything when somebody of that level with that many people subscribe to his channel say, hey, nigga, eight ball took off running. And you know, eight ball may be one that ain't really just in the public eye like that. No it more. Should, to me, it should be if, if you come to find out that you was on the internet saying all this and this and that, and and it just like really trying to just I guess make a name for yourself, but it was a bunch of lies. Once the people found that out, then they should ban you. Mm -hmm. If they continue to follow you, that clearly is an indication that it is some fucked up minds in this world. Real because talk. you are literally tuned in, signed in, giving your attention, time, space, and energy to nothing but lies. Mm -hmm. So what does that say about you? Wow. Right? And this is another reason why the world can be shifted and, and we can be uh, persuaded so easy. Because we don't take the time to find out the facts. And the scripture, That's true. the scripture clearly says study. To show yourself approved. To show thyself approved. But okay, so earlier you said um, the music industry is not like what it used to be. The rap industry is not like what it used to be. So what do you think about the rap industry now? Where have it gone? Has, is it gone better? Is it gone right? Or is it gone wrong? It's gone, in it's, your opinion? To me, it's, it's like this. Picture us all in the, this, this is a big project. We're just niggas just hanging out. We all in it. Mm -hmm. Right? And here come the Jew or the white man coming through there in the limo. Mm-hmm. Coming through slow in the limo. Mm -hmm. The little youngin pulled up, running up on the limo. The, the Jew or the white man let his wonder down. 
He tell a little young and hey, I got a million dollars for the hardest nigga out here, the hardest rapper out here. Mm -hmm. I got a million dollars on right now for the hardest. The difference is, we went and said, no, the difference is they going and saying, okay, we finna take each other out for that what he pulled up and offered us. The difference is with us, we got together and was like, that nigga say he got a million? He got it on him right now in the car? <laughs> <laughs> he say, who the hardest nigga out here? Bro, let me see. If we break this million dollars, me, Cole, Wes, Stan, E. They say you worked together back then. Now they don't shit, work together no more. I'm good. I'm my little cut. We finna go get the million from him. That was that's the difference. We all finna go get the million from him that's pulled up on us for divide and conquer. And we gonna go, he pulling up and he's shitting on us, really nigga telling us pulling up, we out here poverty. But back then, a lot of times in a case like that, you're talking about togetherness, but then they love to separate people back then. They'll be like, well, no, I don't need all y'all. I just need the best person, one. There's no option of all y'all coming together. I just need one of y'all back then. How would it went? Y'all ain't going to tell them, don't worry about it. You can keep driving. Y'all not going to do that. Well, see, we was more, that's, if you think about it, it was more independent labels back then. The Suave Houses, the Rapper Lots, the Swisher Houses, the the rec shops, the all these different the uh, uh, SUC and the Swisher, all these different labels, and 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 even not just from Houston, different labels in was in Dallas, and you know what I'm saying, independent labels. Mm -hmm. That's gone, right? Right, because mm -hmm. that required for niggas to come together. We got CEOE and lady that's gonna take care of everything. We need to be over here in the studio playing our part. We got Stan right there taking care of our paperwork. We all good, you know what I'm saying? We all familyed up, we all do this. We Now it ain't like that. Now it's, I gotta outshine you. I'm over here, I'm claiming this with you, but I'm talking about you with him, and, and uh, I'm starting shit over here, and I'm acting like we friends, but we ain't, because I want it all to myself. You know what I mean? So. Man, I got to ask you, let's get on this music tip. Um, stop lying. You, MJ, you and 8-Ball, uh, MJG, man, that was the hardest song when that, that production was on another level, man. What, how did y'all even come up with that? What, what made y'all come up with Did you come up with that whole concept? Well, I think, um, I think Ball, 8-Ball, or maybe both of them done the beat. Okay. Okay, and that's their their production was very underrated. So eight ball and MJG, their production is very underrated. That coming out hard, that they, they yeah hell yeah, eight ball and MJG produced that. Mister Big, uh, nine millimeter boys, all that the arm robbery, they produced that. So when you you went so when when you heard the beat. Did they already have the, the lyrics for it? Or, or, or did no, they already do theirs? Or y'all did it one day in the studio? That's when we did it in the studio. That's when I was like at my peak of like doing my thing, kind yeah. of and, you know, going in my little momentum was there. And Ball did a beat and shit. We came up with the hook and we all had a little piece of the hook. Stop could or stop would or stop should or stop used to stop. You need to start telling the truth. <laughs> Stop flogging, stop hating, stop exaggerating. exaggerating. You need to start telling them, you know what I'm saying? Man, you in that thing, That was man. me balling MJG. But I, the, but I just love the song, the way, the way you ride that, the way you ride the beat, man. I I never forget it, man. That was the that was the highlight for me. Your voice, the way your tonality was, and then just the, the way that you were riding that beat. And you had to come with it, because eight ball, and I think a rapping, that's a rapping dude, man. MJG, like I say, his, his analytic, the way he his the way his body structure, the way he was moving when he would do a song or whatever. When you see a video, that gave him that essence. And the nigga, he gonna have a little some little old, uh, ad living in there, you know. But just the way your voice tonality was was so so great. The only thing that I don't really be tripping on is 
Like, I don't mind sharing love and talking about people. Yeah. But when have you heard them niggas in the interview talking about Mr. Mike or showing wow. me love? Wow, wow. Never? Pull, pull one up. So they never, ever uh, said, when well, was the last time someone No, they were eight ball and MJG. Oh, okay. Pull one up. And niggas will tell you, man, Mike never. always showed them love after the whole swap. Was it something, what, what made, did y'all have differences or anything? Bro, not that I know of. If so, then they need to answer that. But, of course, you know, in this game, especially when it's music, money, and all the stuff that come with it, it's going to be jealousy and it's going to be, you know, little internal little feelings. I feel a certain way about you, but I ain't going to never really tell you. You know what I'm saying? When was so, the last time you spoke to them? Just picked up the phone and called? Um, I just spoke to MJG. Nah, maybe it's been about maybe a couple of years now, but I have called him. But y'all had, uh, had a good relationship or have a good relationship? For the most part, for okay. the, yeah, I ain't got no ill will toward him. I don't have, have no reason to. You know what I'm saying? So I've always reached out to him. Okay. Was was it a, a thing where was it a Tony Draper thing? Was it was they closer to him than you, or was it somewhere he pretty much had a difference with you, and they maybe fed off of it? What was the deal on why? why what made the separation the honestly, schism? Honestly, E, that's something you would literally have, have to, to sit ask down him. with Ball and G and not. Uh, skate around it. Yeah, oh, I'm not. If I ever and said well, and it niggas, can happen too. I'm that guy, niggas, bro. Have y'all read? Just you ain't even got to. Why y'all haven't? Just ask them. Have y'all and see what they say. You'll know from there. Wow. Because if they tell you yes, they lying. And if they tell you no, then you can ask them why. Wow. Man, I just like I said, I had so much love for the group, and you know, you got a lot of fans out here who love that movement. Yeah, you, I'm one of them. We could have done a Suave House reunion by now. Y'all never done one. Boys ain't bossed up. Y'all the main acts of the shit. All y'all had to do was boss up, reach out to me. Y'all brought, they brought Tila to the thing, but that's they Memphis connection. I seen that. I had niggas hitting me in my DM like, Mike, man, we knew you was going to be there, bro. We was waiting for you to come out. They never reach out. You know and the saying? song's hard that y'all have. Yeah, but it's all good. Hey, everybody got their time, bro. Let me ask you this. You and Ice Cube, man, Wicked Ways, like, when you guys uh, uh, done that song, just run me down through there on even how would you even know. Uh, uh, this guy's from California. He lives on the West Coast. Your music is here in, in Houston and in, you know, the South. How does that happen? How does that West, West Coast South thing happen during that time? I just happen to be, like, I'm a worldwide mob figure, so I can you you. It's times when you ain't gonna know if I'm from New York, if I'm from Texas, if I'm from California. So people just automatically took that I was from Cali. Mm -hmm. and, oh, really? And me and Cali had a certain vibe. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I wonder why would they think that you from? Because the thing is that when I think about somebody being from Cali, especially listening to their music, I'm thinking about your style, the way how you rap. I get maybe because of the way I dress, because I always wore dickies and, and oh, bandanas okay. and stuff. You know what I'm That's saying? probably why. Yeah. Kind of the two things they look at, they look at the dressing and yeah. style of music. I always wore dickies and bandanas and, and stuff, guns and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, when you think about uh, just Ice Cube, how was it in the studio? You know, I detail everything. So, how was it just working with him during that time? And, 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 and uh, did y'all, you couldn't send verses like they do now, mm -mm. but you had to be in the studio. Y'all had to listen to the music. So the nigga came to the studio. Everybody's in here and on this nigga dick, which, hey, it's Ice Cube, so we ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. Me, I can't just do it like that. So I'm finna go way to the other side of the studio and post up with me and my nigga while y'all dick ride. Okay. Right? Who all was there that day? Everybody, this is what I'm telling you. You talking about uh, Eight Ball, Snoop. MJG? Uh, all, throughout the day, they did Everybody done hung around. In and out. Tony Draper. He, he riding with Draper and them because he didn't came from Cali. He coming. We now we finna go in the studio and do a song, me and him. So I let them do what they had to do. You know what I'm saying? Somebody knock on the door. Oh, boy, hey Mike, Cube say, "Come where you at, man? Come on, man." He calling for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I came down there, came over there and whatnot. It was it was cool to stood the experience was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the dude was like, 
intense with his rhyme. And then when I went and studied when him, he was with, in the studio with a young Pac, I said, man, that's where he got that from. Because mm. yeah. Tupac was animated and th that boy Q wrote his shit and had his paper and he got up to like, before he went in the studio, like most niggas will write their shit like, okay, I'm ready, man. Then go in the booth. This nigga wrote his shit and practiced it real quick. Like he was in the booth, like right there in front of me. Like, like he was, I was like, oh, this nigga, yeah. And the shit I had wrote some shit, I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get this nigga. Hell no. So make a step game up. I'm confessing on Boss Talk 101 <laughs> that the verse y'all hear with me and Ice Cube was not the song that was not my first verse. Q made me crumble that shit up and come with some other shit, man. Come harder, man. Yeah, because he was intense and he was ready. Oh, it was hard. It yeah, was he, hard. He was ready. And that boy say, heard a nigga tight name, Mr. Mike, had to catch a flight. It's only right. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. So, and, and I like that, man, the fact that the, the way that, man, our brothers came together back then. And, and, and people don't really like to give it just due, but that was the West Coast uh, South connection. And I, I think that's hard. That's hard, man. It was hard, man. Man, so I got to ask you about uh, just uh, that whole uh project you did on your own uh, the south circuit of mr mike you know what uh, how was that doing it by yourself and and when i say by yourself having your own project coming out that was a was that the first and only one which one the wicked ways yeah yeah now i flew out to uh oakland to do uh most of that album with ea ski and cmt producers out of oakland Okay. Okay. Yeah. You like man, you like them you like them West Coast pr producers. I mean, I like East Coast producers. I just just that's who I was vibing with at the time. So, hey, it is what it is, man. You know wow. I mean? yep. Yeah. So you like like on that is that one of your favorites on that on that project? What's that? That uh, uh, Wicked Way. The one with cute me and cute. Yeah. Um. I would say so, yeah, because Ice Cube on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, it's, other if if he wasn't on it, I don't know if it would be, but because of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did that make you did you think that made like when you was doing it, do you think that that strung up some jealousy over the years? Cuz you for, Bro, I'm just that kind of nigga. Niggas motherfuckers been jealous of me since I was a baby. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just that kind of motherfucker. Why? I, I've been trying to figure it out all this time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I stopped trying to figure it out. I say now, you know what? I'm going to concentrate and make sure I give these niggas something to hate me for. I'm tired of not understanding why y'all hating me. I was about to say, why don't it? Why so I'm going to make sure you? I give you something to hate me for. So right. when the hate come, I'm cool with it. Because I understand why you hating. Mm. Yeah. They're going to hate even more, but... It's so crazy because some people can't can't deal with that. Some people crumble when they get hate. So you you try to elevate when you get hate. Without the devil, we wouldn't really know the power of God. I wow. love that. That's hard. That is so true. Man, uh, when I look at the, uh, uh, the the album and the cover, I'm looking at the cover of how you did it as a young man, a young mind. This was you put this together, right? Yes, sir. Me and the and the label. And the Shalom label. House. What mm -hmm. made you go with that whole look? Because I was I was that nigga at that time. Like I was really in a dark place. Yeah, yeah. I was in a real dark place. Very dark place. My album is called Wicked Ways. I still got a tattoo on my back that mm -hmm. say Mr. Wicked. They called me Black Ghost. I had songs like Total Shock and terrorizing these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That was how I was living. Like, that was the environment I was around. Like, wicked ways. Wicked ways. But the world is evil. The world is, it is wicked, and especially that when you come and start becoming a part of that music business and all that, and just coming from a little, a young nigga from the country, from church, man, this shit is wicked as hell. That's another thing because I hear a lot of people talk about the music industry and so many people get discouraged because once you become into the music industry, no matter what level, or should I say the higher up you go in the music industry, they realize that it's so much, and this is from other people's personal you know, mouth, they realize how much corruption is in it, how much hate, how much, I mean, deceit, mm -hmm. how much 
fee-free, mm -hmm. you know, how true is all of that with your experience? It's very true, but it's, it's you know, it's, you can find some of that same stuff in the church. It's just, it's, it's just a life. It's just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going you gonna to get the truth. You're going to get lies. You're going to get real. You're going to get fake. You're going to get love. You're going to get hate. That's just the Tell nature. me about a time um, in the music industry that you've dealt with. Because there's so many times people deal with, and not even on the music industry this happened. It, I would say any time you're dealing with money and entertainment industry, I would say, um, where... You did deals, because I was on Instagram the other day and I was watching some comedians talk about going to perform different places and you know, they get half of their money up front, but when you get there, they don't want to get paid the other half and stuff like that. I'm sure a lot of that happened in the music industry as well, where you know, sometimes they pay you half or sometimes they don't even pay you at all when you did all your work and you're supposed to get your just due. Mm -hmm. How many times has that happened to you and then how do you deal with it? Well. This it's happened to me a few times. Like I I never got paid from the label. At all. At all. It's like people that was on my songs that ain't even as big an artist of me that got something from the label. So I never got anything from the label. Right? I even had to pay out my contract. Right? Pay them to just let clear me from this thing totally. But if you're not getting paid, wouldn't that break be a breach of your contract where you can walk away I'm anyway? I'm still to this day lawyer team trying to get the best source to get back what's mine. Wow, so the masters and all that stuff. I mean, the label was basically crumbled. The albums were sold to, off to some other, you know what I'm saying? Industry. So, explain to me South Circle, the makeup of, of South Circle. It was an artist that was at Suave House already. When I came, I was so hungry and so extreme, they had to rise me up to the, because it was a roster. Yeah. So, of course, when the new nigga come in, he at the bottom of the roster. I was too hungry for that. So, in order to move me up the roster, they said, well, let's just join him with a guy that's already in the roster. Yeah, so South Circle is uh, 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 that. So as they put this group together, I see they collabed it, and I guess their plot was to uh, collab it with MJG and Eight Ball. You know, when you guys did collab, we didn't really know what it was really going to turn out to be until we did it and start seeing the effects of it. But anywhere you go, so it's just the fact of uh, you know. I just love the music. She don't really know the music like me, but I love the music. I love the history of it. So when I look at, you know, South Circle and I look at Mr. Mike, I look at uh, Eight Ball, I look at the down, you know, just the down south movement. You remember when the down south, them tapes was out? You know what I mean? You All this stuff, man, when we didn't, I was locked on to the south when niggas in the west coast was doing their thing at the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I still remain loyal to what we had going. You know what I'm saying? Whether, whether it was Ghetto Boys, even though the Ghetto Boys seemed kind of more, you know, universal, whatever you want to call it, uh, but eight ball, it, it was just eight ball MJG, South Circle, uh, Mr. Mike, uh, you, Mr. Mike, but then the other big Mike, mm -hmm. you know, all of these different uh, scenarios was something that I valued. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's a whole legacy and a legend that don't get talked about enough for me. Nah, because most of the OGs, is, or most of the guys that came from that era is not around no more. Yeah, yeah. To speak on it. You know? Yeah. With 3 2, you had a bunch of them, man. Man, it was a lot, UGK? Of, a lot of different. Yeah. Did, I, did you ever have run ins with uh, Pimp C? No, nah, I think we talked about that before. I think yeah. I seen him at the radio station downstairs one day, and that was about it. We never really, I never just ran into him like that. What did you think about UGK when you guys were doing y'all thing? UGK inspired me. UGK is part of the reason I started rapping. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, yeah, they, I to go back all the way back to you cramping my style. Hey, you know what I'm saying? stop it, man. Yeah, man, the UGK inspired me, man. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. But I didn't let, I, I, a lot of artists inspired me. The list goes on and on. Yeah. From the south to the west to the east. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and did you ever think a, a young guy from Corpus Christi or, you know, that area down there would be 
uh, uh, one that's done work with all these different elements in the game? Oh, this is what people don't even know. At 17, I was the director of the Gulf Coast Community Choir. Wow. This was kids from all over the Gulf Coast, and we created a choir, and I was the director. We had our first concert at Mother Zion Baptist Church in Bay City, Texas. Wow. And I was like the director in the car at 17. Man, I, I've been getting it in. Man, been getting it in a long time. This, this was before I started rapping. Wow. And, and, and that's hard, man. So when you, when you did this, you got a new project out, Gotta Be Mine. Gotta Be Me. Gotta Be Me. When, be when, you, when, you, when, you, when you put this project out, what, what inspired it? And thank you for our shirts, too. Yeah, we I got the shirts on. You know, we rock it. Right. Yeah, we we rock it. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank y'all. Um, the inspiration for that is really, um, man, I was in a transition in my life recently, still going through it, and um, trying to better myself as a man. Not trying. See, that's that's that word for yeah, what is that opportunity for mm -hmm. me to not better myself. Not yeah, better. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying, right? Mm -hmm. So let me take that out of my vocabulary. So uh, bettering myself as a man and making better decisions that I used to make, like I said, used to be so quick off the top. And now just don't let things affect me how they used to, the way they used to. But what happened, because always in our lives, there's always something that happened that made us change our perception of what we, the track we're on. What happened that Struggle, yeah. fell off the game, fell off life, broke, homeless. Nothing. When you say homeless, how homeless? Because people say homeless and well, they I still... Well, I always, I, me saying homeless is not my home. I, I always, God will provide somewhere for me to go. Okay. Right? But if it's not my home... Then you're homeless. Yes. Okay. Because that means that I can, at any second, the, whosever home it is... Can kick you out. There you go. Wow. Got it. So um, you are on the road to um, better yourself. Yes. And how long has it been since you started that journey? Uh, I think I kind of started it before I realized I started it. But, mm -hmm. but as far as me, literally like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm on this different. I would say probably about maybe uh, close to two years now. And one thing I always tell people, you know, the easiest way to better yourself mm -hmm is to help others better themselves because by doing so, you're actually helping yourself. I agree. And people don't realize it. I, I agree with that totally. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how is your journey going and what have you been doing to better yourself? And with doing so, are you trying to um, do so through the music as well? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a process. It's like, I ain't trying to go cold turkey. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I used to just, I had to be in the streets no matter what. You know, Why? I just, some of it was because trying to get what I needed to get. Some of it just because I was addicted to the shit and I, I need to be out here. Mm -hmm. Even when I don't need to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was at that point at one time. How hard is it to give all that up? Well, that's what I'm saying. I've, I've, I've pretty much did that. Pretty much. You know, to, I mean... When you leave out your house, you know what I'm saying, and you go to work or you go right. to school or whatnot, this and that, you know, it's some form of street element there. You know, it's always a chance that some type of BS can happen. How hard is it? Because I was just speaking to someone earlier, and especially being in this industry, and I see a lot of young kids or a lot of people are still deep in this industry, and it's like the street or that, what you're talking about, go hand in hand with the industry. How, um, is there anyone, is it possible to do this industry without the street? Um, is it possible? Anything is possible? With God, anything is possible. Is it gonna happen? I don't think so, but not especially not with the rap music. Okay. Because the rap music is set up and designed to attract street culture, mm. right? It's set up and designed for that. Drugs, money, sex, partying, jewelry, vacations, back to the club, strip club, throwing money. And each element complements 
each other in that industry. Right. See, rock music, country music, they ain't got to worry about them kind of elements. Mm -hmm. That's why them artists be old, still making money. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a shame, though. Wow. I, you know me, I'm, I'm the music guy, so, uh, you know, I go right back to the music. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. How, did, you ever, uh, did you ever work with Tila and, you know, do work with him? You ain't listen to the album? What that boy say? And Mr. Mike had his Mr. Mike soul. And Super Mike flies with Kryptonite, I know. <laughs> how was it? my name. This, I was to go but, listen to that but, shit. But listen. listen how them boys was saying my name. How was it though? Like, was it, it was cool? It was cool. Yeah, it was. Because cool. I hear stories that he was with Suave House, but he ended up with Rap a lot. Yeah. Was that a time when you guys was dealing with each other during that time? Uh, I remember a time. <laughs> I can tell you this, man. Shout out to Tila, man. I don't have no name off nobody, but me and Thorough must have scared the hell out that boy. One time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to call Ro, man, to see exactly. Uh, See exactly what, what time is it? I wonder if that did cast his phone. But yeah, we scared. We all stayed in the same little apartment for a minute. Me, okay. Me, Ro, and when Tila came, he stayed with us for, for a few. Okay. And we fucked, we messing with him. You know what I'm saying? So you had to, like, you go, if you coming into this, yeah, yeah. You got to go through something. Wow. I was initiated. They all jumped me. Who, who jumped you? The whole crew. You, the whole Suave House crew? Jump me. In order for you to be a part of it. Jump me, initiated me. Like right now, you looking over there and I'm on the floor and everybody and I'm getting beat. Uh -uh. Only, only thing is, they wasn't hitting me in my face. It was my body, my arms, my legs, my all this shit. Just boom, 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 boom. And I remember this nigga ball hit me so hard and like in my chest. I was laying on the ground. This nigga hit me, boom, and I rose up off the ground. Damn. <laughs> Oh yeah, and them niggas had took my gun and hit it. They had, they already had, a, they already had they a plan. plan cause they know they had my, they had my partner. They had uh, Ro. Thorough, yeah. Cause me and him South Circle. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We close. Mm -hmm. He didn't slick my pistol from me and hid it from me cause knowing what finna happen. You know, but it wow. was, it was all in the house of this is how it is. And after that, it sounds like a fraternity. That's what, like, when they be doing hazing but when and they, stuff. When they jumped you in like that, uh, what was uh, you would think after jumping you in and getting that type of bun? Now y'all at a point where y'all don't even talk or speak to one another. What type of jump in is that? Nah, you little, you I little. Once you in, you in. You can't even get out. A brotherhood. A brotherhood forever. Not just for a time when the money and everything going. Ain't nobody else get did like that. So you the only you one that jumped in? Yeah. Why? You the black ask sheep. Them. I'm keep telling y'all to ask them people. You? I told Donnie Houston, man, don't bring these people on here and not ask them people. Then ask, okay, I know y'all got relationships with different artists. I don't have no relationship. I don't want to go over, but man, ask Not me. me. No, we going to ask whatever. Yeah. I'm the one. Yeah. you <laughs> Yeah. I ain't got no relationship. It's up to them not nothing. to answer because some right. people will still escape the question and not try to answer it. Yeah, but, but we I, sure going to ask. They hid my gun, initiated me, knowing that, hey, make sure he ain't able to go get it after this. Well, well you know for a fact that you're the only person they've ever done that to. Yeah. And, 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 but, okay. and you also know if you watch Boss Talk, if I ever talk to anybody over there, that they gonna get asked. I don't mess around, man. Boss Talk a real solid foundation. And I promise you, uh, yeah, they know it too if they watch it. You can, <laughs> after all of that, but let me don't watch it. They see it. <laughs> they, they know it. I'm but going. Me, they they probably me, run from me. But yeah. so, because I, I know how we as human beings we think, and, or me, I should say. Um, after finding out that you're the only person that they did that to, how did you feel about that? I mean, I had I had a mission to accomplish, so. I wasn't really, I just knew that it was just, it wasn't, it was always, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do my thing, everybody just doing their own thing, but it was never like, okay, we blood and we brothers Right, now. so you already knew that in your head? Yeah. Okay. So really, you didn't believe in what they done, really, and they lucky you didn't do something to them. Well, that's why they went and hid my <laughs> But even after that, even after you got that's it back, what I'm saying. that's what he's talking because, about. Because it was like, it was just something like for me. It was just okay. I'm gonna take it. It was that. It was almost like fun. It was almost like it was fun. Wow. 
What was the conversation like after right afterwards? Bro, this what I don't know. bro at that time I was on some whole other <laughs> I ain't, I ain't met a guy to this day, and not saying it just because it's me, that was as hungry as I was. That I'm look at me now. I'm, imagine me almost thirty years ago. I'm still schooling these niggas. Nigga, you were cold on that mic. I do know that. Yeah. At, at that time, at that I was time. like, it was. I mean, I was. I'm living it out. If we friends, mm -hmm. Miss Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I'm devoted and committed to being your friend. Mm -hmm. If we enemies, I'm devoted, devoted and, and committed, committed to, to being be your enemy. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man. You say one time, one time, I think it was, was it Tupac the Rich Eye to you came down and mentioned your name and they didn't tell you? Yeah, he, on the radio. And who didn't tell you? Nobody. Nobody. Who knew about it? I was supposed to tell the you. DJs and niggas that listen to the radio and niggas that knew he was in town asking for Mr. Mike I before know. that boy passed away. Mm. Came to Ace Town, called DJ Hard Hitter and asked him. Called DJ Hard Hitter and asked him. Tupac, he came down here. He hollered, hey man, I want to get with Mr. Mike. Man, Harder, gonna, he could probably going to tell you, yeah, because uh, was, he wasn't the one directly. Somebody called him and told him. Okay. But they didn't get it to me. To, then he the one came and finally told me. So, so when this happened, do you? Okay, here, here's the deal. Like you were signed to Suave House and you were doing your thing. And what do you? What did you? What do you think? If, if anything, would have been a better route, or what did you expect from them as a label to even do? Even after, not just the start, but even the, even at the end when you when y'all was breaking it out, I didn't know what to expect because you gotta remember how I came in it. Okay. I came in it. They gave me an ultimatum. That's just like you, my my little young, my little Ken folk and West. Y'all told me at the door, Mike, you can come in here, but they gotta leave. Mm -hmm. That was the ultimatum they gave me. Mm -hmm. The wow. first day I got there. Mm. I came from Corpus Christi, Texas with a car with my niggas. And they wanted you alone. They didn't want no distractions. That was it. That was it. You can stay, but your niggas got to go. Back to Corpus. My, and, <laughs> one of my partners was like, man, we ain't leaving you here with these. We don't know these niggas. Mm -hmm. We ain't leaving you here with these. I said, bro, this the, is the mission, what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm this a, the break. I'm going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to make it. We're going we gonna to do something with it, man. And they went ahead and left. They had to. And I stayed there from that day, the first day, in a house with a bunch of niggas that I ain't know. Gotta do what you gotta do. And rose up out that bitch and became Mr. Mike. No, if you had to go back and do it niggas. over again, what would you change? My business mind going into that shit. And not accepting no no uh, banana in the tailpipe type stories and, and falsified fake shit just to throw me, keep me off my business game. But I hear that back then that was the major story for a lot of entertainers back then. So yeah. many people hearing about their story now went through that and find legal battles right now to this day now Yeah. for rights to their stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. But it's changing now, though the industry that we're in now. It ain't it ain't changing by it's, it's, not just, it's doing different things. But I think earlier, Mr. Mike alluded to the fact of what music do for you and do to you, and what it pushes you into. So I think it's still the agenda is not even. It may have even worsened. I know it's worsened because of the way that people are saying things, outlandish things, leading them into different things. You remember Duro was on the show and he talked about the reason why he's seeing about. Things that are pleasant, like the ice cream paint job, just things that he's doing that that promote, you know, a good time, and you know, because what you say becomes you. I I agree. I agree that um, things have gotten worse where what they're saying in their music. But the part that I'm talking about, where where I'm thinking that certain things got better, is because the knowledge of business 
is no, more out the there. Side. The business side of it is more out I would there. Say the business side um, YouTube is exists. So when I say that, people have that tool to do all their research if they if they want to. Right. They can't say they didn't know. Right. You know, nobody pull a wool over their eyes unless it was like you know what I'm just happy for this deal. I didn't have anything before, and I'm just going to take this. Five thousand dollar deal when I really could have gotten a hundred thousand if I really you know went other avenues. Right. But I just didn't know. Right. It's up to them. Right. And it's just like anything, like even the sports players yesteryear and in the past not making as much money as the sports players are today. Mike Tyson is not as successful as Floyd Mayweather. Exactly. Right. Tyson was a draw. Didn't understand his business. Mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather is a boxing business genius. Exactly. Wow. Let me ask you about some current events like uh, Kanye. What do you think about what's going on with him? Um, I think his, his, you got to look at his support system and see what that's like. Because at some point, we all have to fall back on our support system. And if you fall back... From doing your thing and that exhaust hit you and you need to fall back on your support system and ain't nothing there, that's not a good situation to be in. So I'm not sure with his mother passed, you divorced from your ch children, you go and have differences with Jay-Z and the people that you came into the game with. The fans is fickle. They don't care one way or another. Where's your support system and what, what are you going to have to fall back on once they claim that he is with another rant and he going crazy and this and this and that? And if you ain't got nothing to fall back on, them people know it, that's their opportunity to go on and take you on up out of there. Wow. Um, I got a question. So um, where were you when you heard the news of Takeoff passing away and how it happened? I was at work. And what was your views? I work you during do? the day. I go to the plantation. Keep me out from trouble. What was your thoughts on the whole situation? I thought it was absolutely um, disappointing. I thought it was it was terrible. Yeah, I, I didn't think that was a good look at all. And um, But I got a song on this album that called They Ain't Playing Fair. Okay. Mm. Y'all go get this album, Gotta Be Me. It's a nice album from beginning to end. It's a song. How many on songs there? on it? Thirteen. That's hard. And it's a song on there called "They Ain't Playing Fair." And um, the hook says, um, "Now we dying, don't nobody even care." So is it's relating to that situation? No, it's not. I wrote that song before that Maybe. situation. Oh, okay. My music, a lot of my music is prophetic and it's, and it's like timeless. Mm -hmm. like you can go listen to my songs from 95. They sound like they came out yesterday. Yeah. Okay. But don't nobody really care no more. Mm -hmm. The immediate family, people, but most people go, oh, that's fucked up. And we're going to wait for the next death. Wow. It, and it seems like they just skate past it. Right past it. And, and who's... Really holding this boy, boy Tupac say, he say, I have to speak on it because if I don't speak on it, which these youngsters don't do, they don't speak consciously, they speak materialistically. Mm -hmm. The difference between uh, an artist, poet, street minister like a Tupac, as opposed to like the Rick Rosses and Jay Z's and Young Jeezy's and the ones of this new this generation. generation and the, after that is they are glorifying the lavish life whereas Tupac glorified the struggle. He took the struggle and made it sound live as a motherfucker. Right? Mm -hmm. They take the lavish life and, and, and so I'm able to relate to more niggas that, that struggling. I'm just making it sound so live to them and showing them how I'm coming up out of that. These niggas is putting it in our face. Hey, look how I already got it. Mm -hmm. I already got it. I got money everywhere, nigga. Y'all ain't seen me struggle at all. I'm just showing y'all what, all what I got. You know what I'm saying? So the, re the relation ain't really there. A lot of it is fake. 
and well, and, and you and it's being you being killed for it. People, mm -hmm. uh, artists, the little rappers, and the being killed on stupid shit. That shit is absolutely stupid, man. And ain't nobody taking credibility, uh, accountability, accountability for it. You know, people got mad at me when I. Well, I ain't gonna say it. Just some, certain people didn't didn't agree. I was saying, and then they played me real weak too on it too. They made me feel like I was Michael Jackson little brother no. because they was they, they. I said. Back in the days, you would have had a Stop the Violence tour or something like that. These, where is the Jay Z's? Where is the, where is the Nas's and all these different people? Where is the Puff Daddies? Where is the come togetherness to where we could speak in a way to where we could say, "Hey, we're not pleased with the people killing each other." And 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 where, it, but. It, does this stop their money flow or the way that things going for them? Why is there not a cry for 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 the the situation together as leaders as as cats with money? Because they got money. The J princes, all these people got money. Mm -hmm. Why don't why don't people come together anymore? Because everybody is everybody for self. They used to come together. You remember that? That's, we were just talking about that. Right. You know what I'm saying? They they yeah. er, everybody for self. Niggas is for self, bro, bro. Once I, I got mine, hey, y'all niggas and bro, the boy that boy Tupac gave us the blue print, black print, and whatever other print, if you was really studying his gospel and not just caught up in the antics and what so and what uh the media showed you. If you got caught up in that boy gospel, he put it it's like the Bible. You gon you can go there and find anything, something you're going through and find an answer in there. Yeah, real the same with that boy gospel. Yeah, everything we going through is black people, as people, period. In this in the world, poverty, he, that boy spoke on it, man. He said, he said, I talk about it in my music because once we stop talking about it, they'll stop taking statistics. And once they stop taking statistics, it'll be niggas dying in the streets and nobody even give a fuck. And that's where we at. Wow. That's hard. That was a hard statement. Yeah. But that's a real statement. Yeah. Man, so I, I, we coming to the end. Like, like, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, you know, uh, if they want to le reach out for your music, if they the trying to the, get that, the gotta music be is me. on all platforms. Wherever you get your music, gotta be me is right there. Already, wherever you get it, got iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, yeah, wherever you get it, it's right there. Gotta be me, Mr. Mike. It's a nice album. The single has gotta be me. We still. Trying to get the video shot to it, so I'm probably be promoting this album for the next uh, rollover into 2023. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And all to the next year, man. So wow, yeah. I know I'm about to be jamming it out. That you know how I do it. Yeah. I'm gonna throw it in the deck, baby, mm -hmm. like it used to. Man. We got a few to almost two couple more minutes till ten. Y'all done took me all over the place. Ask me something else. Y'all wanted the whole story. Don't cut me off now. <laughs> Let's go. You ain't got it. You got half, barely got half of it. It's your attitude. Easy. I can ask you about some songs because I, I love that song. It's your attitude, you know, uh, when you guys was when you guys came up with that. Like, what was it like? Like, I, I love that song. That song resonates, man. Yeah, that's and like you said earlier, it sounds like it came out yesterday. That's an old remake of the Bar K's. Okay. Yeah. If you go pull up the Bar K's, an old soul group. They I got, know about the bar case. They got us. You'll hit that's that song. That's where it come from. We just replayed it. Same melody. But you wrote that. You went on, got on there. You got on that oh, thing. Oh, yeah. We T-mixed and you know what I'm saying? And he did the beat and replayed it. And uh, But if you listen to the original, it's the bar case. Wow. Are you, so one thing about the rap industry that I realized is the fact that a lot of times anything that you go through in your life, you always put it into your music, right? No doubt. Okay, is there a song um, that you've done that you've let out and put certain things in that people haven't really caught on to what you're actually talking about? Uh, that you think that is, it's impactful, like you're talking about certain situations, certain things that happen, but you know that people really haven't really, don't really notice what you're trying to say. It's a song on this album called Last Laugh. Mm -hmm. Out of everything I done been through, out of all the humiliation, out of all the struggle, out of all the people not believing in me, out of all people doing this, doing that, whatever, and me seeing me struggling and in, in my, you know what I'm saying, situations and what, 
I Want to Get the Last Laugh. So it's a song on here. Need a couple hundred on the dash, couple M's in the stash, turning words into cash. This world ain't seen me on my ass, but that too shall pass. Got to get the last laugh. I like that. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Um, you know what? Your, your voice still the same. No doubt. <laughs> hey, that's the scripture so, say my sheep gonna know my voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I don't need no new fans. I ain't out here trying to get no new fans. I do this for diehard Mr. Mike fans that believe in me and manifest my music. Because if they didn't need it, I wouldn't be able to give it to them. I only mm -hmm. give it to you because God give it to me to give back. Here you go. I know you need this real shit, man. There and, you go, brother. That's and hard. since everybody know you from rapping, and I know you have a voice, why don't you sing and rap in your songs? He I do sometimes. I do all the time. Yeah. That let okay. me know you ain't banging my music. She no, don't be don't banging it. She don't me. bang nothing. She, if you ain't Bob Marley or somebody, <laughs> she ain't got no lot of respect for us, man, man like that. Good. Just give it I'm a, your guy. Give it a chance. <laughs> now, New give Day. Let, let me ask you that, that New Day. We, we, man. Boy, I just go back in memory. You know that, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, it might be a motivated month. Man, you was riding that beat. Like I said, I'm going to keep telling you about how you wrote this beat. Like you knew how to maneuver on that song to where it made a nigga just want to tune in. You so know? many niggas bit my style, bro, and study my style to this day. That's why they don't be wanting to reach out to me because they know they be biting my shit. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And be studying my shit. So if I know I'm studying CEOE and how how... Him and Miss Jamaica do they podcast, and I done studied they blueprint, and I'm really trying to do mine just like them. And now I find myself competing with them. Now I find myself being like, man, F them. I can do better than them when really you got your whole idea from them. Damn. And instead of calling them and saying, man, appreciate y'all, y'all so, man, y'all done motivated me, inspired me, man, what, check out my show, what y'all think, man. Can I get y'all a blessing? Because if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't even know how to do this podcast. That's real. And you see, well, the thing about that, what some people don't realize is that some people just want the recognition. They don't care if you do it. They'll even bless you for doing it. But they just want the recognition to know that this is where you got it from. Yeah. You know what I mean? But who did that to you? Man, I done had people. I done had all kind of people. <laughs> I had all kind of people oh. steal my songs, steal my music. Who was it? Different artists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What name yeah. on You know that? <laughs> It was a group out of California named Conscious Daughters. I heard my music in one of their songs one time. I just heard what's to do from up here. Uh, is it Beat King? Yeah, Beat King. Which is, Beat I just King. interviewed him a little while back. He song, did that to you? Got a song with uh, with uh, uh, Moneybag Yo and uh, Yeah, he and talked about else. it on the show. And somebody and he, else. he used that song and bit off of you. I got a song called Pop It. Drop It. Drop It. They took my whole melody. And did this, I, hold on, I had, I got the, I recorded it, put it up on social media and everything, and people like, yep, they damn sure did. So yeah, I get niggas bite my shit all the, Ice Cube them done bit some of my shit. But B King, let's go back, I know this skate crop, that's my boy right there, I'm definitely gonna ask him about this, I love it, you know what I'm yeah, saying? we need to bring that to hold on, let me see if I can, if yeah, I can pull that up. Let me hear this pop because I ain't hold never on. heard this story. Let, let me see if I still got that in my phone, because it's been a minute since I posted it. And them, that video take up memory. I might have deleted that shit. But I'm sure we're going to go look it up. You, what's the name of your song? Called Pop It? Pop It. Pop It, Drop It. I don't even know if it's if that song is... I can go get it. Believe me, I'm going to play it. You ain't got to worry about that. And it's the song with him and Moneybag Yo. I, got, I know that song. Oh, okay. That's the song I thought was original, to be honest with you. Man, that's but it, man. honestly, in today's day and age, is anything really original? No, but but I know what he's saying, though. If you're going to do it, though, show me some show, show me some love. That's you know, it. Shout me out. Uh, that's it. But don't leave me hanging like that, man. Because people will take from the old, switch it up to make it new. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but you see how much love I be giving niggas and shit? Yeah, yeah. And to me, that's cool. Like, yeah, that's, that's what cool. I do. And, and and like I said, I'm, I know B King cool. He, he a cool dude. So I don't know. I, I I'm like, man, what happened? And it you ain't know? necessarily so he did it with no ill intentions. Yeah, yeah he might just did it. And a lot of niggas do it because they don't feel like I'm mainstream, and they don't feel like I got this big hundred thousands of followers and all this. So ain't nobody gonna really know. You see what I'm saying? 
Yeah. But, but in your know. younger days now, when you started doing this, um, did you never do that to anybody? <laughs> do what? Bit off like of somebody, be, right? I've, been, was, I've inspired plenty of people, but no, I I'm give, talking I getting give. inspiration from other people and took it. And I'm I not giving Mr. Mike give wasn't like nobody that okay. you ever heard, though. I'm original as they come. He ain't, now, he ain't like nobody that you heard. I'm as original as they come. Niggas done bit my shit. <laughs> All up and down when the niggas got braids and tattoos and long hair and shit after I came. After I came through that shit. When I had my, my hair was down the hill. I started getting tattoos and shit on, on me and shit in the 90s, nine, early 90s. And nobody wasn't doing it back then. Night, niggas was getting tattoos, but I'm saying niggas around me. I around was inspiring you. them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, go, go listen to it. You got to listen to it. It's in the music. That shit is right there in the music. Dang, it sure is. And I got that music. I be jamming it too. I, you know, I jam out. You know, I go. I just flip out on you while we going down the highway. I'm, what I'm gonna do, man? Thank you so much for coming on the show. We love you, Mister Mike. Hey, love y'all back, man. And listen, yeah. this ain't the last time. I'm, I'm the type of dude. I do shows. I keep doing them. I'm throwing. Already like know. So I don't be doing like the other. But I ain't got no rules. If it was a highway and I supposed to be on this side of the highway, I might be on this side and fly out enough to get back over when a car coming. Yeah. I might do anything. Yeah, I don't do go by the rules like that. You like, oh well, ask the questions like they usually do the interview. That's not me. I don't know how they do it because I don't. I'm 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 like Mr. Mike, nigga. I'm original. It's organic. You try. <laughs> It's organic. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we out.